Hey friends, I um, feel like I haven't been on here in a long, long time. I guess it hasn't been that long. It's been like, what, a week, right? <laughs> it just feels like a lot longer because so much is going on for me and I don't know. So uh, I don't have to apologize, really. I just haven't. Well, I do have to apologize first because I'm going kind of rogue today and I also am, I've got so many thoughts that are conflicting in my mind. I'm just trying to put the puzzle pieces together and the puzzle pieces that fit in my mind and understanding go pretty much the opposite way of what I've been told all my life growing up in church and Sunday school and um, what I teach my children now at the daycare. So just bear with me. Like I always say, you can take it or leave it. Um, I do also want to apologize because I meant to do a video last week and I had more thoughts that were clear on some of these things. And I just didn't get to it. So I might have forgotten or missed some things. So I'm sorry about that. Um, these next couple chapters in Revelation 17 and 18 um, are dark. And um, just about uh, Yah's the Most High... Elohim's wrath upon and judgment upon the evils um, of Babylon. And so I will try to remember my thoughts. Sadly, I did not write them down. I should have, and it just got away from me last weekend, so I'm sorry again. Um, but as I always say, you can share your own thoughts Um you know, when the spirit is moving in you and you can just, it, it clicks, that's what happened. But sadly, maybe it'll come back to me when I uh, read. Um, I've forgotten some things, but, and other things I didn't look into. Because also, um, some of these things aren't really written about. And I think they would take a long time to maybe discover, unless you've discovered them, please put a link in the comments so we can see on some points that I uh, touch on here. So let's just start reading, and then I'll show you the things I was thinking about. All right, the Doom of Babylon. This is the Amplified Version. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and spoke with me, saying, Come here, I will show you the judgment and doom of the great prostitute who is seated on many waters, influencing nations. She will, I mean, she with whom the kings of the earth have committed acts of immorality, and the inhabitants of the earth have become intoxicated with the wine of her immorality. Sorry for my jumbled word. Uh, verse 3. And the angel carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was entirely covered with blasphemous names, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold, precious stones, and pearls, and she was holding in her hand a gold cup full of abominations and the filth of her sexual immorality. And on her forehead a name was written, A Mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes, false religions and heresies, and the abominations of the earth. I saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of the saints, Yah's people, and with the blood of the witnesses of Jesus, Yahusha, who were murdered. Or martyred. When I saw her, I wondered in amazement. But the angel said to me, Why do you wonder? I will explain to you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that you saw was once, but now is not. And he is about to come up out of the abyss, the bottomless pit, the dwelling place of demons. And that's under the earth, under our stationary earth. And go to destruction, perdition. 
and the inhabitants of the earth whose names have not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world will be astonished when they see the beast because he was and is not and is yet to come to earth. Here is the mind which has wisdom, and this is what it knows about the vision. The seven heads are seven hills on which the woman sits, and they are seven kings, five of whom have fallen, one exists and is reigning, and the other, the seventh, has not yet come. And when he does come, he must remain a little while. And the beast that once was but is not is himself also an eighth king and is one of the seven, and he goes to destruction, perdition. The ten horns that you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, but together they receive authority as kings for a single hour for a common purpose, along with the beast. These kings have one purpose, one mind, one common goal, and they give their power and authority to the beast. Okay. So I'm going to stop there because I had a couple thoughts. Okay. So when I first read this, now I'll tell you a little background if you're new to the channel. Um, thank you for subscribing to I found I found that there were new subscribers this week. Um, let me give a little background. Um, so I'm coming from the context of thinking of one flat earth to, um, hidden history where, um, I believe, uh, the satanic powers that are in charge have um, hidden what has really happened in our past and with that the fact that our past is not this long thousands and thousands of years so meaning the bible and what events are in it were not as far off as we have been told and taught even in the churches um, I also come from the thought process of um, trying to decipher and discern uh, whether revelation, or part of it I should say, not all of it, part of it uh, has already happened. And I will go more into that maybe in the coming weeks. But So that's my train of thought. I also am... Um, I don't want to say dabbling, but that sounds like I'm going down the wrong path. I have in the back of my mind the possibility, but it doesn't dictate where I go with my thinking all the time. Um, I do have the possibility in my mind that not only was history hidden, but also specific uh, locations that the Bible talks about and is written um, weren't where they say they were. So there's a thought um, among truthers of um, Egypt and the promised land being here in North America. Now that goes along with hidden history that we um, are told that Col uh, Columbus discovered America and nobody knew uh, of these lands uh, besides the natives that were here and blah, blah, blah. Uh, that would probably be untrue so just a lot hidden and a lot to uncover but that is my thought process through this so if you're new here and i mentioned things that pertain to those things that's what i'm talking about because uh in chapter 17 i did find some interesting thoughts and just as i was reading it again just now um i have to try to process uh these evil uh, entities and evil kings and the, who are these beings. I'm not even going to call them, they're not people, I don't think. Um, so I wanted to go back to the thought of possibly who this prostitute is and these ten kings. Um, first of all, I have... Friends and I know uh, others have um, very detailed um, 
described the popes in history uh, in this pope currently they believe he is one of the kings or if he's not that eighth king um, I don't know about that especially because history is different than what we've been told so my thinking was instead of um, Babylon now I'm just saying think outside the box Babylon could be either in the past some great nation we don't know about or if we are in this time now uh, Babylon could be uh, the United States I only say that take it with a grain of salt please don't quote me and say this kooky lady on YouTube said this um, just hear me out what I'm thinking um, when we think of how um, I'm, I'm in the United States the United States has influenced the world and I know Europe is also influential um, specifically you know um, England and Western Europe um, and I know things are bad there right now this Babylon but I, I digress a little bit the United States gives so much power to other nations just like this states Babylon the great the mother of prostitutes um, and the abominations of the earth we are central I'm talking about the United States um, the United States is central to much of the depravity the greed the murder um, of the the world as we know it um, now I want to point out and put in the uh, if you want to call it the Illuminati they do fit in here because Satan himself is a part of that huge web and so my other thought is is this referring to these um, groups that Satan himself is the head of and they worship him and they do his bidding and they cause abominations and vile things on the earth and um, persecute and kill Yah's own I'm just thinking out loud really um, this very much describes what we see now um, as either of those things the United States and I guess they go hand in hand the United States and all nations are the United States is a business I don't think they're a country but it, um, they are controlled that's why we have the obelisks in uh, the Vatican that's why we have the obelisk in Washington DC we have the obelisk I can't remember where the third one is help me out friends anyways um, they have these certain points I think it's in England so they have these certain points and I've heard that the Vatican is for the religious center the United States is used as the financial center and then England I don't remember but anyway those kinds of things how they keep their power and um, I believe somehow that goes along with it could go along with um, these things the uh, the power that they have for the time so that's just my thoughts take it or leave it um, but I do think North America is more of a center because people always say um, in the mainstream commentaries and in church I've heard it um, well, America isn't in the Bible United States isn't in the Bible actually none of the countries we know of as today are in the Bible so what happened you know if Babylon is the Vatican it doesn't say 
Rome or the Roman Empire. It doesn't say um, England um, or Great Britain or anything like that. It doesn't say, um, I can't remember the older name for America, but anyways, um, this is where it gets kind of tricky. Um, have these things already happened? Have, um, are we in this now? Are we in a later time? What have they hidden? And so, um, as I said in previous videos, the destruction that we find, honestly, all over the world, but I'm just going to focus a little bit on America because I'm here, um, the West is riddled, and also uh, Central America and South America are riddled with um, electric scarring and... You can see whatever happened here with California being an island. And actually, America in other older maps I've seen is much larger. I think it comes out here. Um, but see, there's no Great Lakes here. Um, some believe that the Promised Land is up here. The Tower of Babel is also up here. People have um, speculated that Egypt is here, that the Mississippi is truly the Nile, that this could be the promised land, I believe, um, and they journeyed from here to here. I'm not sure where they say the Euphrates is. I've lost track of trying to keep up with all of those videos and thoughts, but um, I'm sorry, I'm kind of all over the place, but with this destruction, I just think there's more, I think we, that people had known about these lands and they were um, connected, especially Russia, like we always thought, um, Russia and Alaska and what has happened here. I'll also show you this. Um, most of the Bible, if not all, is centered around this portion of the world and in all reality um, could have been this is all dust now and maybe it wasn't back I we know it wasn't there's older maps than this I don't know the correct date on this it says 1772 okay so before this this could have been sprawling um, but this small portion of our world as we know it doesn't make sense to me all the time with what the Bible is talking about. And I'm not trying to be like, oh, look at the United States. It's not about that. We're all one, we're people on this earth. Um, it, this just seems um, more accurate in some ways to me. So, like I said, take it or leave it. Okay, so I'm not going to go into that. I will get my commentary a little bit here. Give me two seconds. I'm sorry, I had to walk away for a minute. Um, again, this commentary is, um, more about the symbolic pieces than literal. John is shown the vision of the destruction of Babylon as representing false religion by one of the angels, which had the seven vials, and is invited to behold the judgment of a woman, the symbol of Babylon described as a great whore, which also people think that's the Catholic Church who is seen sitting on many waters. The interpretation waters is that these are the many nations ruled by Babylon. The woman is further described as having committed fornication. The inhabitants of the earth are declared to have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. The picture of the woman as utterly evil signifies spiritual adultery, portraying those who outwardly and religiously seem to join to the true God, but who are untrue to this relationship. So that would go along with... Um, even as my friend Trevor points out the name of the Most High, the one true Elohim, Yahuwah, is, de is demeaned to the generic term God. And I saw a great video, and I will try to find the link uh, from somebody on Instagram that spoke of why Satan uses that name, God, for himself.
but he has deceived people to think that they are speaking to the true God, but he himself is getting the credit. So as in our money says, in God we trust, well, we know with that all-seeing eye on our dollar, um, that is not the same God. And that's actually referring to him. To me in my spirit, I understood that when people say, oh my God, they're actually referring to Satan, and I believe they're giving homage to him. So um, we have to be very careful, and I, I become more and more convicted about Yah's name that way. That's why you hear me refer to him as the Most High, because I want, um, to, I want my spirit to understand who the true Yah is, and he is the Most High above all, and that's what the Bible says. Um, I'm sorry, I'm way off, but let's just keep reading. <laughs> it goes along with it, if you can think. Um, sometimes I find myself, I'm thinking out loud, but I'm literally piecing things together and thoughts together that, that will come together. So um, that's the spiritual adultery. What my point is, that's the spiritual adultery we're seeing in the world now. And that is what Satan promotes through the entities and the demonic beings that he uh, has his demons inhabit in our governors and our, our um, officials and these people that, in, not these people, these beings that enslave us. Um, so, of course, they're going to put their slaves in spiritual adultery. They're going to sway them to do things against the one true Yahuwah. Okay. So it's an untrue relationship. Everything that the United States, that's here it goes again, the United States is based upon uh, in God we trust, and this was a Christian nation. I'm sorry to break it to you. It was not. Um, it was never a Christian nation, a Christ, Yahusha, following nation. They were following the other, the God of this world. Okay, the concept of spiritual adultery is frequently used in describing the apostasy of Israel. <laughs> Characteristically, the Jehovah of the Old Testament is the husband of Israel. In the New Testament, okay, here we go. The church is viewed as a virgin destined to be joined to her husband in the future, but she is warned against spiritual adultery. So obviously, so we are all God's, we are God's chosen. We are grafted in. Okay, the alliance of the apostate church with the political powers of the world during this future time not only debauches the truth, or I'm sorry, the true spiritual character of the church and compromises her testimony in every way, but has the devastating effect of inducing religious drunkenness on the part of the inhabitants of the earth. So I, that's what we see now. And that's why I said I don't know what in the timeline where we are. We do see this. I don't think we're in the Laodicea era, as churches say, and churches I've been to. I don't, I don't know. But we do look around the world. It does seem like we're drunk with something but seriously wrong. It's poisoned. I won't go into more of that more. But anyways. Um, okay, so we'll go down a little bit. Um, we accept the invitation. He's in the wilderness. This lady is the great harlot, and she's seated on the scarlet beast, which is full of names, seven heads and ten horns. Uh, the revived Roman Empire is what we believe, and it's the center of the world government of Gentile power in that day. Um, he does refer to Daniel uh, and Revelation 13, which we've gone to. Um, he will go down the Catholic Church Road and the papacy, so um, I don't necessarily agree with that anymore because I don't know... 
Um, and he goes by the traditional historical narrative of the Middle Ages and Protestantism versus Catholicism, and I just don't know. Um, and then he goes through the timeline of uh, Old Babylon with Hammurabi and um, Nebuchadnezzar. So yada, yada, yada. <laughs> Um, so I probably can't go to that commentary too much. So let's just go on because I've talked way too much on the victory for the lamb. Oh, one more thing before I start. Um, I did notice, and in other books in Revelation, there are two books of life. There's the Lamb's Book of Life which is those who follow Yahusha. And then there is verse 8 here, the book of life that's written at the foundation of the world. So it says, the beast that you saw was once, but now is not. And he is about to come up out of the abyss, the bottomless pit, the dwelling place of demons, and go to destruction, perdition. And the inhabitants of the earth, whose names have not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, will be astonished when they see the beast, because he was and is not, and is yet to come to earth. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like he was once on earth, and then he went away for a while, and he came back, and these people may have heard about him, but had not ever seen him. And so they were astonished that he was, but then he was not there, and then he came back to earth. But there is a definite book of life, I believe, for everyone that is on earth. That is very tricky because I, I would not be able to find, I mean, it would take a while, I think, to find any, and I haven't tried, I admit, I cannot find any writing about the book of life versus the lamb's book of life and just to know about the pre-edemic race about uh who knows about how they've changed history and um if people had to um be forcefully taken underground if um like we have been told like the parasitic demonic beings had re-entered people into civilization we don't know all that's happened so <clears throat> i'm assuming yah has everyone's name he knows who has been born into this realm but this is talking about a specific people so that has me question the timeline a little bit um something else had me really question the way it was worded I don't remember. I'm sorry. I'm kind of scatterbrained. There's so much. Um, so yes, this just this alone um, and the wording and the, the um, tense of how this is written makes me think uh, these people had seen this. It's, talk, it's not talking about us. It's talking about another group of inhabitants. Anyways, I'll leave it at that. Okay. Verse 14. They will wage war against the Lamb, Christ, and the Lamb will triumph and conquer them because he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and those who are with him and on his side are called and chosen, elect, and faithful. <laughs> Then the angel said to me, The waters which you saw where the prostitute is seated are peoples and multitudes and nations and languages. And the ten horns which you saw, the beast, these will hate the prostitute and will make her desolate and naked, stripped of her power and influence, and will eat her flesh and completely consume her with fire. For Yah has put in, it, in their hearts to carry out his purpose by agreeing together to surrender their kingdom to the beast until the prophetic words of God will be fulfilled. The woman whom you saw is the great city, which reigns over and dominates and controls the kings and the political leaders of earth. Okay, some believe it's Babylon, Rome, 
or many cities. However, that's um, using the narrative that's given to us. Like I said, it's all about thinking outside the box. Um, this may be something that's aside from Babylon or Rome. And Rome wasn't even what we think it was anyways. I'm telling you, it's, it's very strange. Um, <laughs> and here's the Antichrist. Um, man, I, I just, I sometimes don't have words. So let's go to chapter 18. <clears throat> Excuse me while I change this. Okay. Babylon is fallen. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, possessing great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his splendor and radiance. And he shouted with a mighty voice, saying, Fallen, fallen, certainly to be destroyed is Babylon the Great. Whatever the exact city, Babylon here indicates human civilization, arrayed in opposition to God and ready to be judged. Like I said, I don't think it's what we've been told. She has become a dwelling place for demons, a dungeon haunted by every unclean spirit, and a prison for every unclean and loathsome bird. That's interesting. We don't think of a bird among the demons. So I'll have to look more into that. For all the nations have drunk from the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality, and the kings and the political leaders of the earth have committed immorality with her. And the merchants of the earth have become rich by the wealth and economic power of her sensuous luxury. Verse 4, I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not be a partner in her sins and receive her plagues. Interesting words here. How do we receive plagues? Here's a little other side note. I'm sorry, I have to say this. Usually, we don't receive a cold. Okay. We don't receive the flu. Well, you can receive the flu jab. Receiving is taking on voluntarily, okay? Or involuntarily if you're a baby or a child being held down by your mother and doctor. Mm. Okay. Come out of her, my people, so that you will not be a partner in her sins. This is why you have to know what's going on and receive her plagues. For her sins, crimes, and transgressions have piled up as high as heaven. There's a flat earth reference. Because if we had space, that would be infinite. And God has remembered her wickedness and crimes for judgment. Repay to her even as she has repaid others. And pay back to her double her torment in accordance with what she has done. In the cup of sin and suffering which she mixed, mixed a double portion of perfect justice for her. To the degree that she glorified herself and reveled and gloated in her sensuality, living deliciously and luxuriously. This sounds more like America to me the more I read. That's all what this nation, air quotes, is about to that same degree imposed on her torment. And I should say not even this nation, just this, this realm in general, what the satanic rulers, the demonic, have done is put this on people. And they just, people just look around us. They eat it up, literally and figuratively. Ugh. Anyways, it is disgusting. And, ugh. Anyways. Okay. I'll start with verse 7, sorry. To the degree that she glorified herself and reveled and gloated in her sensuality, living deliciously and luxuriously, to that same degree impose on her torment and anguish and mourning and grief, for in her heart she boasts, I sit as a queen on a throne, and I am not a widow, and will never ever see mourning or experience grief. 
For this reason, in a single day of her plagues, afflictions and calamities will come, pestilence and mourning and famine, and she will be burned up with fire and completely consumed. For strong and powerful is the uh, Lord Yah who judges her. Okay. So let's just go back. I don't want to go so far ahead, which I already have, but um, without some application of, I think, what the Most High, and I, I pray the Spirit is upon us as we read this, um, what he implores for us, because there are those tidbits that he wants. He wants us to be wise um, we have to have wisdom. And I've heard a lot, and I will do a video probably today because uh, I just can't hold it off anymore because it goes along with this. In this day, we need wisdom. So he's calling out for those of us or in the past that we need to pay attention and just as the other uh, chapters have said, uh, and I showed you that link from The Living Word, I believe, on YouTube, that we need to calculate. So wisdom, discernment, calculation, that means sitting down and, like I said, putting the puzzle pieces together. Um, standing, this is also standing against not receiving what they give us or what they had given us. Um, Yah uses the lamb and Yahusha uses those who are faithful uh, in judging uh, and causing torture upon the evil. Okay? Okay, verse 9. So laments for Babylon and the kings and political leaders of the earth. So I just want you to keep in mind, every time this says this, I really, this is demonic entities. Don't think they're people. Please don't think they're people. They're not. Okay. Who committed immorality and lived luxuriously with her will weep and beat their chests in mourning over her when they see the smoke of her burning. Standing a long way off in the fear of her torment, woe, woe, the great city, the strong city Babylon. In a single hour, your judgment has come. And again, we do see many um, geographical um, evidences of burnings around the world and just uh, mm. <laughs> mud flood and all this stuff. Judgments. Okay, verse 11, and the merchants of the earth will weep and grieve over her because no one buys their cargo, goods, merchandise anymore. Okay, uh, this is also of a time past, I think, that's hidden from us. Cargoes of gold and silver and precious stones and pearls and fine linen and purple and silk, scarlet, all kinds of citron, scented wood, and every article of ivory and every article of very costly and lavish wood, bronze and iron and marble. Ah, oh, look at this. Now, I'm sorry, I have to go... Towards the mud flood again. What are all these buildings made of? And all this cargo, this is not the kind of cargo we have nowadays, okay? Um, we have crap sent over. We have crap food today. We have crap wood. We have crap um, products to put in our bodies and on our bodies and Don't tell me we have, we do not have cargoes of all of these beautiful, strong things that Yah has given us, okay? Uh, the world is not what we've been told in the past. Okay, verse 13, and cinnamon and spices and incense and perfume and frankincense and wine and olive oil and fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, cargoes of horses, chariots, carriages, slaves and human lives. The ripe fruits and delicacies of your soul's desire have gone from you and all things that were luxurious and 
luxurious and extravagant are lost to you never again to be found verse 15 the merchants who handled these articles who grew wealthy from their business with her will stand a long way off in the fear of her torment weeping and mourning aloud saying woe woe for the great city that was robed in fine linen in purple and scarlet gilded and adorned with gold and precious stones and with pearls because in one hour all the vast wealth has been laid waste I believe we're living in that this laid waste now. <laughs> and every ship captain or navigator and every passenger and sailor and all who make their living by the sea stood a long way off, 18, and exclaimed as they watched the smoke of her burning, saying, what could be compared to the great city? And they drew, threw dust on their heads and were crying out, weeping and mourning, saying, woe, woe, for the great city where all had ships at sea grew rich. From her great wealth, because in one hour she has been laid waste. Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you saints, God's people, and apostles and prophets who are martyred, because God has executed vengeance for you through righteous judgment upon her. And Yah always has righteous judgment upon. And we're not done yet, okay? The divine sentence upon Babylon. Then a single powerful angel picked up a boulder, like a great millstone, and flung it into the sea, saying, With such violence will Babylon the Great be hurled down by the sudden spectacular judgment of God and will never be found again. This implies... <clears throat> that this is buried somewhere... Um, and this isn't just at the end of times, because at the end of time, if you go to the regular uh, commentary of these things, thinking revelation is only in the future and all in the future exclusively, um, there's nothing to be found. There's no more people to find it because the kingdom of heaven would be here. Do you see what I'm saying? I hope you know what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, verse 22. And the sound of harvests and musicians and flutists and trumpeters will never again be heard in you, and no skilled artisan of any craft will ever again be found in you. And the sound of the millstone grinding grain will never again be heard in you, for commerce will no longer flourish and normal life will cease. Normal life will cease. And never again will the light of the lamp shine in you, and never again will the voice of the bridegroom and the bride be heard in you. For your merchants were the great and prominent men of the earth, because all the nations were deceived and misled by your sorcery, through magic spells and poisonous charms. And in Babylon was found the blood of prophets and of saints, God's people, Yah's people, and of all those who have been slaughtered on earth. Um, okay. Let me get my thoughts together. Yeah. So, yes. Do I think, I'm in between here, and I'll get to that next time I do my video, because I, I will say this now that we're towards the end of Revelation. To me, at points of my study, I do believe we could be between Revelation 20. Because we have to remember, even though in Daniel, it gives us those times, and I'm no Greek scholar at all, so please. <laughs> These are just my thoughts. Again, I say that about a million times. Um, the timeline of events is unclear. My word, our whole history is unclear. Um I rarely even find people that speak of the pre-Adamic race. Um, I cannot find anyone that speaks on the pre-Adamic race in context of hidden history and uh, the possible uh, millennial kingdom already happening, <laughs> like and and beyond. Um, that Genesis one, I have found one study and it really helped me. Um, he, this man spoke about uh, the gap between Genesis 1 and 2. But 
Uh, actually, I'm sorry, I found two. Derek Prince is one of them. Um, so if you look up Derek Prince pre-edemic race teaching, um, or pre-edemic, I shouldn't say race, I don't like that word, pre-edemic um, civilization. Uh, he has a really good, if you go on uh, DerekPrince.com, I think, um, he ha they even have notes that he wrote. It's like four pages, an outline of, of him preaching on that. Anyways, I digress. Um, just all these pieces put together, like I said, I don't, And I think even UAP had this theory about the Great Lake out here that used to be covering most of the West. Like, what happened? What, what is this? What is this? What are these islands? What was there a lake here? Like the Rocky Mountains are like one big electric scar. They're scarring all the way down. This doesn't show it, but there's all the way down to the tip of South America. Um. There's so much, so much to think about. But for me and for you, uh, whatever time, I always say this, whatever time we're in, my main focus is what does Yahusha, what, what am I supposed to do to follow him? How, no matter what time we're in, do the Yah's people, us, the chosen ones, the set-apart ones, do now. Whatever time we're in, whether you think we're awaiting his coming, whether you think we're in the tribulation, whether you think we um, are post-millennial reign, whether you think we're in Revelation 20, whether you think we're in Revelation 17, it doesn't matter. It matters. And it's important to remember. The Holy Spirit is still leading. Uh, UAP said it. Uh, that, um, I lost my train of thought, but he said, oh, that he would not leave us alone. Yah would not leave those he has in this realm still, wherever we are in whatever time, alone. And I know we won't. I can testify to that. And I know others who can testify. Uh, the spirit is still working. And we are here now for a time such as this. And what did Revelation teach us just now? Like I said, wisdom. We need calculated wisdom, discernment. Those who are faithful and do not take, receive, uh, the plagues, no one who receives or goes along with debaucheries, <sighs> it's hard. Um, but he will have vengeance and judgment that's righteous. And we have to be faithful. All right. So that's all I have for now. Blessings.